Warning, Prospect Watch is not your average hockey podcast, and that's okay with us. Our goal is to introduce you to stars in the making from all over the world. They may not be household names yet, but we assure you they will be soon enough. Welcome to Prospect Watch. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Prospect Watch. On this episode, we are lucky enough to have with us uh, Wayne Labrie from the head uh, the head scout of the Brooks Bandits of the AJHL. Oh All right, uh, first off, Wayne, we would just like to say congrats to your team. Uh, I believe it's their fourth national championship and seventh AJHL yeah. championship. So uh, congrats to that. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. For sure, for sure. And I believe that's three in a row there for you guys too, right? Yeah, uh, no, nobody's counting, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we're, we're well, pretty we fortunate. Are. We definitely yeah. are. Yeah. We we're, definitely we're, are. Yeah. we're counting. <laughs> right, right. So uh, as you guys know, we've had a ton of this guy's, uh, you know, old players uh, on the show. Um, tons yeah. and tons of Brooks Bandits. They are uh, one of our favorites to have on and a really just... I don't even want to say up and coming team because they've been there and they've they've been doing it for a while. But they're, yeah. they're really putting the AJHL on the map. And, uh, you know, this guy is, plays a big part of it. So, um, Steele, if, if you got nothing else, I, I just want to get in some questions and pick this guy's brain. We, listen, uh, we've been trying to wrangle this this man to get on our show since we started talking to, 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 to the folks that you brought onto the team, because we've seen the quality of players that you've brought to this team. And that's what has been so intriguing to us is that, man, we, we, we got to get this guy on the show. We, we got to pick this guy's <laughs> brain. <laughs> we got to find out what the, what the sauce is here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Let's let's start off with some some easy one, right? Okay, so now that we know a little background on you, is is it what brought you to be? Because we know you played for the team for a while, you know what I mean, and everything like that. So what brought you to be? And you were a head coach even, you know, at some points uh, in your career. What brought you back to Brooks Bandits to be the head scout? Yeah, I, well, I, actually, ironically, I, I used to coach in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. I coached one year in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Um, was a competitive, competitive coach or a, a scout on another organization in Drumheller, actually, for, for five years with Brian Kerr and the X-Leaf. Um, so Brooks was kind of always, a, you know, an, an enemy of ours. It was a close <laughs> rival. Um, never ever played in Brooks, um, uh, unfortunately, you know. Um, but um, fortunately for me, I was uh, Ryan. Had, Ryan had approached me when I was done my tenor and in Drumheller to to join the organization and you know be hitting my uh, seventh year going into this year. So you know, very fortunate to to be a, be involved with this with this program. That's pretty cool, man. That is I nice. have to uh, say, <laughs> we're, we're very nice thankful you were too. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan is a smart man for sure for bringing you on. Now, um, I think I read somewhere recently uh, you were a guardian of the blue paint just like I was, uh, but I think you uh, have some pretty nice uh, guys that you uh, helped, you know, share a crease with in your time. A lot, a lot better players than I did for sure. Uh, yeah, I was telling you guys. guys yeah. yeah. I was telling you guys earlier, you know, both Ryan and I are ex goaltenders. Obviously, Ryan backed up Corey Crawford in the queue back in the day. And I had a little stint in the Western Hockey League backing up Bill Ranford and then played, finished off my junior A in Saskatchewan with Notre Dame with, with Curtis Joseph. So um, I have no problem saying I was a backup because I was never as good as those guys. But uh, <laughs> fortunate just to be around two, two NHL Hall of Famers like, like those guys. And, uh, you know, very, uh, very inspirational looking back on it. Man, that'd be awesome. Wow. So let's, let's go back to, let's go back to some of that. What, what was it that got you involved in hockey to begin with? Yeah, I started, you know, Canadian kids started off at a young age. I've always loved it. And, you know, and, and when my playing 
career came to to an end in you know in university i i had an opportunity to get into the coaching side of it which was very passionate for me um you know throughout my coaching i've kind of always had guys say man you're a good recruiter uh, i think this is going to be something that you're you're going to end up doing um you know maybe telling me i wasn't a good enough coach i i have no idea but um, the, the scouting end is very passionate for me um, I enjoy giving kids an opportunity. I enjoy, uh, you know, communicating with parents and, you know, just being a, just being a guy that, you know, can, can give these young men an opportunity. And with us in Brooks, uh, you know, no better opportunity than to, to get these kids division one scholarships. That's exactly right, man. Yeah. So you, you talked about this a little bit, but when trying to find that next crop of players uh, you, that you seem to do every year, um, you know, on average, how many different leagues and, and, and you know, everything across the, the world do you think you keep a track of on any given season? The landscape has changed so much here lately with advisors, with agents, um, with the number of leagues, a number of players you know, myself and, you know, three other scouts within our organization spread out all over Canada and the U.S. Um, do a tremendous job along with our head coach and our assistant coaches who, you know, everybody has a has a key in this recruiting or, you know, identifying players or taking phone calls from advisors to agents to, to, to tip us off on a player. But, you know, um, we do work very extremely hard as a staff. I'm, I'm into the U S and Ontario, you know, two, three times a year, um, just trying to identify, you know, kids that, uh, you know, fit the bill to, to one day be a Brooks bandit. So let, let's, let's, let's break that down a little bit. What, what is it that you tend to look for in a prospect like as for each position, like forward, defense, goaltending, obviously, but, but what is it that you tend to look for in each of those prospects? So let's say for, what do you look for in a pro as a forward? I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, somebody that's able to play with speed, play with pace, ha has a skill set that, you know, wants to make plays, doesn't want to dump pucks all the time, um, takes chances, is creative, and then at the end of the day, when they come to Brooks, they have to really be coachable. If they're not coachable and they're not winning, willing to, to put in the time in the video and, and in the off-ice works, workouts and stuff, it's just not going to work. Our, our program's a full-time program. You know, kids are showing up at 9 and leaving at 4.30. They don't work at all. They're coming to Brooks for one reason, and that's to get better at hockey. So it's, it's unique in the facet that when we recruit guys, we communicate that, hey, you know, you're coming here for one reason, and that's to get better at hockey and be coached by one of the, you know, what I believe is the best junior A coaches in the country. And there you have it, folks, the secret to the sauce, because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what position, you know what I mean? Obviously, with goaltending and, and defense and forward, you're going to have, you know, different positional things. But for the most part, you pretty much look like that for players like that across the board, right? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, um, you know, the game, again, I say the game has changed. Uh, there's a lot of entitlement in this game. And, and, and for us, we don't guarantee anything. We, we will never say to a player, hey, you're coming to Brooks, you're going to be on the first line, you're going to play power play, you're going to start every game. It's the kids that we have success with are the kids that want to want to get a scholarship for one. B, they want to come and earn it. Those, those are the kids that have success in Brooks. Um, were they all perfect when they came to us? No, but um, again, it comes down to to being coachable, listening to listening to Ryan and our staff, and uh, you know the rest. The rest will really take care of itself. That's that's definitely uh, you know insight in what to what you guys do up there because you guys are so polished. polished. It seems by the time the playoffs come and everything like that. Um, everybody's just on the same page and nobody as talented as they are are really you know looking for uh, to be that one player everybody plays as a team and and that's really something that on some leagues around aren't doing that so right yeah yeah well and i say you know when you're dealing with elite athletes you can imagine bringing in 23 kids 
who have all been stars on their team or had success. And now we have to bring them in and now they have to be a team and they got to, they got to accept different roles. You know, we got guys and I don't like saying line one, two, three, or four, because we're so deep um, and, and we've got a lot of depth on our teams, but we have guys that, you know, have had to accept lesser roles and, you know, they have no problem doing it um, just simply because they, they know they're, they're doing something that is going to benefit them when they move on from Brooks. Yeah. So talking about that depth, you know, what is your secret? Um, because, you know, it, it's unfathomable to me that every year you, you lose a guy like Ryan McAllister and TJ Hughes and Zach Bookman that were like, you know, the trio of bandits there. And now, you know, Aiden Fink is moving on and, you know, uh, Nathan Freeze looking, you know, eventually he's still there, but he's going to go to Penn State and Sam, Sam Court on the back ends looking to go to New Hampshire, I think. And, you know, Ethan Barwick is moving on as well. Uh, so, you know, how do you get guys like that and that much talent to come in and, and have all these other leagues somehow pass on these guys? Well, I think the biggest thing is recruiting, networking. You know, McAllister is an interesting one. I, I wasn't a part of that one. Um, went to the BCHL and, you know, we, we made a transaction that year and brought him in and, and Ryan, to be honest, and he'd be the first one to tell you, was just okay when he got to us. But again, it comes down to being coachable, um, listening to Ryan, get him to move his feet. And, you know, right now the rest is history with Cali. So, um, again, it's, it's never a rebuild with us. It, it's a reload. And when you're getting players through your team, like McAllister, Hughes, Kuhlman's, Barwick's, you know, Fink's, um, uh, a lot of those in my cars, I guess I should say, um, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, players want to come to Brooks because we're not getting good players because they're coming to Brooks to, to play in a beautiful spot. Brooks is a great community and it's well supported. Um, but there are a lot of other prettier places to play in Canada the, than there is in Brooks, Alberta. So these kids are coming for one reason and that's to, to, to simply get better and hopefully get drafted and move on to successful college careers. And, and you have had quite a plethora of players do just that throughout the time that you've been there, you know what I mean? And so let, let's kind of <clears throat> build on what you were saying earlier, you know, when, when you do try to recruit, is there anything that, I mean, we, we know that your, your basic um, idea and principle is that you, you're trying a player to come there to get better, but what is your main selling point? for bringing a player to come to the bandits. You know what I mean? Like, cause you said you sit down with the parents sometimes and you know what I mean? So what would be like your selling point to say the parents or a player to have them come here? Yeah, the way it's kind of gone in the last three years, ever since COVID and it's kind of benefited us in a lot of ways. We do a Zoom presentation because most of, a lot of our guys are long distances. So we'll do a Zoom with the player and his parents and potentially the agent and we'll go right through our entire program from from showing up when they have to be there to our billet screening to our education process to our day to day um, everything so wow. really we answer a lot of questions in a in a probably about a 25 minute zoom um, where it, it's crazy but we have you know parents and players getting off that zoom saying wow I've never seen anything like this so Again, it all comes down to the program that Ryan's built here in his uh, in his 16 years, and you know, um, brought in some good people, assistant coaches, you know, myself and and our other scouts, and uh, it, it's just a very well oiled well oiled uh, wheel, I call it, um, that everybody knows their roles and everybody knows their jobs, and we just have fun building this thing the best we can. Yeah, and, and you're doing a darn good job of it. So, uh, I'll say, holy moly. <laughs> right. So, you know, with the success of, you know, the the, the Cal McCars, the Ryan McAllister, who now signed with the Panthers, TJ Hughes playing in a huge NCAA club, you know, like University of Michigan, and, and Fink, you know, potentially even being drafted this year, um, pretty pretty high ranking for my get it but you know beginning of the season that i saw maybe sixth or seventh round now he's shooting up to you know 
potentially third or fourth. Third or and that's, fourth, yeah. You know, it, and, and uh, you know, obviously him signing with Penn State, who did so well this year, um, is your job of recruiting getting any easier in that sense where, you know, you can throw these guys' names out there and, and say, like, hey, look, this is the kind of players we build here, you know. It definitely helps, no question. When you look at the track record of our success, but, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, players are just going to walk into Brooks. It's, it's so competitive. Um, there's a lot of good teams out there. There's a lot of great coaches. Um, there's different opportunities for players. So, you know, really, you know, a lot of players it, it, it's are maybe afraid to come to Brooks um, just simply because a lot think they're not good enough. Um, you know, so it, it's unique. Every player is different. But I always say to those kids who, you know, are kind of questioning whether what they should do is, hey, if, we weren't making this call or we weren't having the zoom. Uh, you know, it, it, it's here for a reason, right? So if we weren't interested, we wouldn't be doing this. So it's just a matter of reassuring the parents, reassuring the players that hey, we have genuine interest and here's the opportunity in front of you. And again, those ones that, uh, you know, listen, will will come in and, uh, and take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how you have to do it. I mean, it's, how much say does coach or GM Ryan give you? Are you pretty much free to bring him a list of players you like, or does he kind of come to you and say, this is what we want to do? Or, I mean, you guys kind of seem to be on the same page here. So, I mean, how does that whole dynamic work? Yeah, 100%. You know, on the recruiting side, it's say I've been around it long enough. Uh, you know, when it comes to recruiting, in my opinion on a player, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to have him listen and, and, and take my view on guys. Now, when these players come to camp, I'm totally out of it. Um, these players earn their spots or and are we move on from them. So, you know, in the initial phase of recruiting, touch a base with players, getting out on the road, um, hey, 100%, I have free reign to, to, to do as much as I can and try and fit in my, my real-time job uh, along with doing this. Well, there you go. Right. There you go. All right. Um, so many fans would think that, you know, your job is over now because the season ended. But in reality, <laughs> you you, ha you're, you chuckle at that, right? Oh, but in reality, <laughs> uh, you, you have to close on a whole new crop of players. And it's really just beginning all over again as soon as, you know, your team won the championship, right? Uh, because, I mean, even through the season, you were doing work. But uh, I think you even uh, closed on a player today. Is that right? Yeah, we got the uh, Budazoni player out of, uh, out of Coquitlam. So um, good impact guy with the BCHL, obviously changing direction there outside of Hockey Canada. We have the, the ability to, to acquire or get players from BC now and vice versa. So do they. So it's it, the landscape's changing a little bit, but... Uh, you know, back to our recruiting is it's it's never ending. Um, you know, my phone's nonstop. Ryan's phone's nonstop. He's constantly, you know, in the office here, regardless of you know us winning a championship here three weeks ago. Yeah, he's in the office Monday to Friday. So there's nobody that works harder than than him. So um, for us, it's just about finding the best players, and uh, you know, come August, uh, you know sorting through them and you know hopefully we uh we uh, have an opportunity to win again well i'll tell you what you keep bringing the crop of players that you're bringing in and you're just going to keep on racking up the trophies there uh mm -hmm. Wayne, I, I don't see uh, any uh i don't see any problems with you uh worrying about the next crop or do you lance <laughs> Uh, no, not no. from not from the players that I've seen. No. Uh, the rumblings of Jeez. you know some of the players that they're going to bring in. Uh, you know, the, <clears throat> no wonder this guy has free reign because you know every year he just seems to. Uh, how are you going to replace guys like this? And somehow they do it. You know, somehow they do yeah. it and they get a job done. So well, I tell you, two years ago when we lost TJ and and Cali and Philly. Um, you know, I was like, oh man, that's, you know, 300 points out of our front end and then Zach Bookman, another hundred. So, yeah. um, for, for this last group to, to win a national championship, we had a lot more adversity last year than any other year that kind of, I've been a part of. So that was exciting. And, you know, a lot of different players, 
you know, Aiden Fink and, you know, those guys stepping up and now having four guys rated in central scouting with our incoming yes. recruit being the number five. So that's the, you know, that's the most uh, NHL prospects uh, on any junior A team in Canada. So we're really hoping June um, really puts us over the top. And uh, if we can yeah. get, you know, five of those guys drafted great, but, I honestly think we could get three minimum of three. So it's, uh, uh, it's going to yeah, be exciting I, times. I, I would at least say that um, what we've looked at as far as prospects are concerned and where, where we think drafts and things are that concerned, you know, I think, I think it's easily that you could at least get three play three, three of those players drafted in this year's draft um, easily. Yeah. I think quite easily. So, all right, well now, you did kind of touch on it a little bit earlier, but when you're not at the rink, what what do you do? What, what what's a what's a relaxing day for Wayne like when he's not at the rink, not answering the phone, not at your <laughs> regular five or whatever, whatever, right? Yeah, well, I should. My my wife will probably watch this when it airs, so I should probably <laughs> spend spending time with my wife and 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 my two beautiful kids, but. Uh, Honestly, hockey never stops. If right. I'd be lying if I said uh, there isn't a day that I don't think about it or something comes into play. But um, yeah, definitely just enjoy and you know family time and hitting the golf course when I can and uh, you know just yeah, it's a, it's a short season with us ending at the end of May and starting up here early August. It's uh, there's there's not much of a gap anymore. So. Um, yeah. Again, I, I always remind myself is take advantage of the, the opportunity and be grateful and um, this doesn't last forever. So mm. Exactly. And, and that says a lot about your family too, being supportive of what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. I, you know, we, we, she met me when I was a head coach and GM and uh, struggled through all the ups and downs in, in the coaching business and then me getting involved in scouting. So it's a lot of time away from, from kids, family events, stuff like that. But uh, no question, I couldn't do it without a supportive uh, wife. Yeah, I think that was a that was a great answer. You should uh, you should be good with that answer uh, yeah. once you've used this for sure. <laughs> so, um, all right, so from one goalie to another, um, the amazing play of you know Ethan this year, um, and and even the past few seasons has helped to definitely you know carry this team, uh, especially this season when you said that you know they reached uh, a point of a little adversity going through losing so many great players that they did um, from the prior the season. So yeah. you know now he's moving uh, to Lindenwood University or I think yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. My question is: Is Wilson Maxfield the the next the next up and coming guy? I mean, his numbers seem pretty amazing. I think he played ten games this year. Uh, was a one point six seven goals against average with a nine thirty six save percentage with three shutouts and eight wins. Uh, pretty pretty good numbers. I mean, is he going to be the guy to overtake the net? You think? I know you're not the coach or anything like that. Yeah, but, you know, know. Matt, Matt, yeah, Max he had a successful rookie year. Um, yeah. I think obviously he would have liked to have played more games, but that was Ethan Barwick, you know, coming in, you know, staying four years and paying his dues. So right. Ethan was an interesting story that a lot of guys never thought he was ever going to play junior A hockey. Didn't have great midget AAA numbers. Got cut by a real good AAA team in Alberta. You know, came to us, played his, paid his dues. You know, um, was under the tutelage of uh, Pierce Charlson, Michigan State, who's now moving on to Alaska. So, um, Ethan is, you know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be a pro one day. Um, he he really evolved into uh, into a great goaltender, and you know, Maxi, seeing how he prepares, uh, Maxi will obviously be given every opportunity to to take the net and we'll have some competition pushing them like every other position. All right. All right. I can't wait to watch that. I mean, me neither. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> um, one of the things that I've always been very intrigued with is the ability that, that this team has to kind of do exactly what you talked about is, is rebuild or, or not rebuild, but reload. Retool, okay. yeah, yeah. A retool, or you, you know, you're you you just fire off the the fire off the couple rounds and and eject the shells and just throw a couple more in there and and you're ready to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, 
what is it that allows you that you what what do you think is what do you think it is that allows you to have that kind of success i mean is there is there something that you can maybe point to that you can say this is the reason why we're this successful or this is a reason why we're we're able to do this or or this is the reason why we're able to just reload instead of rebuild every year I think it's just it comes down to being prepared. You know, we'll we'll have camps. We'll have two two camps, spring camps, uh, at the end of uh, every season, which is be in April and typically May, where we'll bring in. You know, the first group will be a, a U15 showcase. We'll have it, so we're dealing with 14, 15, and 16 year olds. And that now is this something that you guys sponsor or? No, so we'll, we'll recruit and we'll identify and we'll invite, okay. um, you know, 180 to 200, wow. 14, 15, 16 year old kids right to Brooks to physically see how we do it. And then two weeks later, we'll bring in, um, you know, 17 and 18 year olds. So um, w- when you're dealing with 400 kids, let's say coming through your system every year, plus what we've identified throughout the season everywhere else in you know the Canada and the US that just helps kind of build our our networking of players who we see fitting into what specific year and then what comes in from the outside whether it's the BCHL acquisitions and junior A etc um, and, and that's really just it's really more about staying on top of it and staying engaged and in, in, in communicating with parents on a consistent basis to to let them know that we are physically interested in their in their son. That's definitely interesting. Wow, that is a wealth of uh, you know information that I didn't even know. That many you know individual kids coming up there and just you know, yeah. no wonder you said your phone doesn't stop ringing. You know what I mean? Yeah, Oof. yeah. Canada, Canada, U.S. plan helps for sure. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. So I'd hate to see your cell phone bill. Woo! Oh, if that yeah. wasn't. Oh my. Um, hopefully that's paid by the team. Anyway. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so with so many names set to move on again this offseason, can you give us a name maybe from the team currently or a player that's already scheduled to to be, you know, incoming um, next season that we should keep an eye out for, you know? guy that just you think maybe is going to be like a maybe not to the level of think that he did this year but really stand out next season and and make a name for himself yeah I, you know I, I think an Alberta guy and Josh Weeb who played with the Calgary Flames AAA U18 team um, had an opportunity to play on our team last year um, just wasn't going to get the minutes and opportunity so tough conversation had to be made and we just said, hey, go back to U18, dominate, do what you need to do. He went back there, led the Alberta AAA Midget League in scoring, um, attended the TELUS Cup, um, you know, put his team on his back to get to the TELUS Cup. So, you know, interesting story. You know, he, he goes back, does his thing, commits to, to Western Michigan um, prior to him coming to Brooks next year. So he's going to be an interesting one to watch. He's a big six, six one, six two power forward that can really shoot it. Um, being, being around us, was with us with the national championship, being an affiliate player. So he, he would be one guy that, uh, you know, I, I think is, is going to have an exciting career. I'm looking at his stats as we speak now that he does look pretty darn impressive. Uh, yeah. Six, 60 points in 38 games this year and uh, 21 in 10 games in the playoffs for uh, the Calgary Flames U18 team. Wow, yeah. that uh, that definitely seems like somebody to watch. So that, that'll that definitely be interesting to see how that develops. And Western Michigan, you know, is, uh, is uh, pretty good to, to you guys and at least uh, keeps an eye out for your players because uh, – you know, as we as we know, you know, quite a few of them now, including yeah. McAllister, have yeah. uh, made their way down there. So, wow. Yeah. But it's a really yeah. good program, though. For sure. Yeah, they do a great job on moving guys to pro. And, you know, obviously, Cali, you know, I've committed to them early mm-hmm. and, you know, obviously had other, you know, schools interested and stuff, but, you know, has a great advisor. And, you know, when, when you look at that, a young guy like that that has a high ceiling yet, 
you know, he wants to put himself in a situation where a, a, that specific college team moves guys on to the NHL and Western Michigan does a great job. And they obviously did a great job with Cali to, to give him that opportunity to join Florida. Uh, for sure. And uh, we, we were very lucky to, to have Cali on and, and he was a, mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 a wonderful uh, young man to sit down and talk to and uh, just a great hockey mind for being such a such a young player and it was just a real thrill to be able to sit down and talk and I got to tell you something Wayne it's been an awesome thrill to sit and talk to you and just find out the inner workings of of how this whole thing works so I, I gotta say man I, I thank you very much man for doing this we really appreciate this Hey, awesome. awesome. Appreciate, appreciate you giving us the opportunity to, to promote Brooks. Yeah, no problem. For sure. Lance, well, uh, what do you think here? Uh, we got another good one here in the can. We don't want to keep this uh, man too late from his family, right? No, no. He's uh, probably got a couple of uh, parents to call still or whatever, too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, always working, always working. And his work, uh, it, you know, shows in the team. So, uh Thank you again for joining us. And, uh, you know, it was great to be able to pick your brain a little bit and uh, get into the inner workings, like Steele said. So now I'm also going to throw this out here to you as well. You're welcome on this show anytime. You hey, yeah, appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Any more guys that uh, you want to talk to, hey, we can, we can. There you go. Sure. There you yeah, go. Yeah. But, but we would like to still kind of, you know, keep touch with you too, as well, because there's so much knowledge that we haven't even touched yet with how you're doing what you're doing and, and the success that team, this team has had because of what you and, and Ryan are building up there uh, at Brooks. And so we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to do this. Uh, and Lance, why don't you tell the folks how we can find you, where we can get you, and uh, where we can get all your great stuff, man. Sure. As always, guys, you can find all my articles and the shows um, on steelflyers.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Lance Green 39. Awesome sauce. And you can follow all the great other stuff that we do at the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, including the great Prospect Watch and, of course, the Hockey Writers Inc. and the Steel Flyers All Network podcast. Come check out the steelflyers.com website to get all the great stuff, especially this show right here, Prospect Watch. Got to be checking that out. Thank you very much for checking us out. I'm Steel Flyers. You can find me on Twitter at steelflyers52. Thank you very much for watching. Prospect Watch. We'll catch you all next episode.